Hello friends, we're in the main part of Cologne here and uh, lots of construction going on. Uh, one of my subscribers asked me why do you record your things in such a noisy environment? Well, because it's my office, that's my studio, that's where the machine is running where I record this tutorial and about 300 other tutorials which you can always find in my channel. Okay, um, I want to show you something about two-dimensional animation which is uh, quite nice and finally to create particles from those little dots moving around. Um, we'll use the mesh network for this and in order to use mesh you start with a simple geometry. This sphere is not a simple geometry. Um, well we can go to polygon sphere and reduce the subdivisions here to 5 by 5 so uh, we ha don't have a sphere anymore but uh, quite a nice uh, object which <laughs> kind of resem resembles a sphere we create a new material here uh, for example surface shader and we give it the color uh, yellow and uh, let's actually go back to the where we just came from where is it here uh, and reduce the radius to 0 0.1 so we make it really tiny. Uh, now next thing we go to the mesh tab, tab here and we click on this icon. This icon will create 10 instances of this thing, of this object which is called a P sphere 1 and it will make in the same process uh, within a, a millisecond or so the P sphere invisible. So this will be invisible and we will have 10 objects of this kind uh, just in, in this uh, linear distribution. We will see this in a second. So they're here. The original sphere one is hidden now. So if you want to change the color of these things, you can pick them, but there's no color node here. You need to pick this one, and then you can um, um, change the color if you like. But we're here, and uh, that's the mesh network, and it's the waiter. It's uh, it's that's the central uh, processing <laughs> unit, so to say, for the mesh network. And if we want to go into details, for example, how they are distributed, we go to the mesh distribute tab here. And uh, if we want to have uh, instead of ten more points, we just use the slider. But what I want to do is uh, I want to um, place them on a grid and that's why I pick grid here and we have three by three on a grid currently why three by three because grid X is three grid Z is three two and uh, grid Y is one If we set this to three we have this sort of box here but we want to keep things flat today uh, and because flat is nice of course and uh, we'll uh, use many more in the X and the Z direction so let's say 50 so that's 50 points right here and 50 right here so that's a, that's a very dense network let's focus on it it's actually too dense I guess so we go to the hidden object and that's where we reduce the geometry to 5, 5 and where we reduce the radius from 1 to 0 0.1 we'll reduce it even further to 0 0.05 now you see the uh, little dots quite distinct uh, in a distinctive order here we want to uh, do some jiggling here and uh, that's where we use the mesh waiter again because it gives us the and that's the key of this tutorial the signal node so when you click here you need to go to a little bit to the right and add the signal node to the current mesh network when we invoke this command the distribution will be totally different which you see now here uh, let's extend the uh, playback range to say 500 when you type in 500 here it adjusts here accordingly if you type in 650 here you have 650 whereas if you type in 400 here you uh, reduce things to 400 and if you type in 1000 here you do have 1000 frames here but not right here so you have to extend the slider again 
so that was a brief thing about these two fields here <laughs> I'm fine with 500 actually okay um, we're in the mesh network and we have now a signal node sitting right here remember the distribute node tells us how to distribute them in a grid and the signal node um, makes them signal around like this this is a very complex motion and actually you might want to use this in a three-dimensional manner well um, here you have the position tab uh, or the sub whatever a node uh, the position is currently set to one in X and one in a Z that basically means it doesn't stretch in those directions in the flat plane but it does stretch a lot in the Y plane that's why it's going up and down uh, if we reduce this to zero they lie flat on the ground and we have a much more interesting story to say that uh, I think it's more interesting in 2d uh, animation like this so instead of uh, looking through the perspective window from the top down we just go to the top window and we press the key F and then we see the same thing in a totally orthogonal way now I want to show you a few things here concerning the uh, signal node uh, the first thing you might actually let me close this uh, use is the rotation so you can rotate the objects so they um, play around with the with the rotation uh, in a random uh, way more obvious is the scale mode you see some are bigger and some are smaller now uh, so this is a uh, rotation and scale uh, you have noise settings here and when you change the octaves that's the random octave so to say um, you get uh, totally different uh, animations like this here change the persistence but the trigonometry settings are quite interesting too uh, especially if you disable the step uh, basically disabling the step does the same thing as uh, reducing the step amount which is currently set to 150 to 0 let's disable it Wow isn't that nice I was so surprised when I saw this first time and actually it is in 2d it's flat let's check this here in the perspective view you see it's a flat object really nice and if you want to have this slower how do we do this well um, you have the noise scale here you can reduce this and when you reduce the time scale this goes very very slowly increase the noise scale again if you enable step and reduce it you get a more regular arrangement like this so when you have this select the mesh network go to FX here and then you find the mesh menu set uh, selection here the mesh uh, utilities and under utilities you can set up particles with an initial state from mesh that means Maya will create from all the how many are they 250 or so uh, dots uh, particles one dot one particle at the exact position where the mesh network uh, objects are uh, so instead of placing n particles in the scene uh, there 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 etc or mixing them up with a with um, uh, force fields uh, you can just use your mesh network create an interesting and very fast simulation like this and from there create particles so let's invoke this 
takes a second and now you see the particles right here if you want them to look differently you go to shading and instead of points you create spheres and uh, go up here to the particle size and reduce the radius to 0 0.01 for example so you have them very small or 0 0.04 so there there you can change the color obviously uh, the particles won't stay in the in that flat plane anymore because they have the nucleus and the nucleus if you click on it has a gravity of 9.8 but still they kind of linked to the motion of our mesh network so they don't fall down infinitely so let's have a look what they do of course the animation now the simulation takes more time because we have so many objects in the scene you see the particles the white ones make the same motion as the yellow instances of the mesh network I think it's quite a neat process but uh, I don't understand it completely if you um, stop the simulation here and hide the repro mesh now which is these these dots from the mesh network by pressing H the particles here uh, won't follow that motion anymore they will just fall down just a little bit so they use the current state of the mesh network as the starting point for their behavior so you can freeze that you can export this uh, via alembic etc so uh, this is all I wanted to show you really go from there and try to find out what this n particle thing is about and what you can do with it bye bye